Hi everyone and welcome to the LGBTQ Consortium with Affinity Community Services. My name is Kim Hunt and I'm the Executive Director of Affinity. And for those of you who don't know, Affinity is a social justice organization that works with and on behalf of black LGBT communities, queer youth, and allies. And our work is centered on in three areas, civic engagement, leadership development, and health and wellness. And we're gonna talk a little bit about all of those things today. I have a guest today, but uh, first I wanna fill you in on a couple of things. Uh, as you know, this past Wednesday, uh, Governor Pat Quinn signed into law um, the Religious Freedom and Marriage Fairness Act, which allowed same-sex marriage in the state of Illinois, making it the 16th state in the union, and uh, uh, District of Columbia is also part of this small club of, of uh, places that allows uh, marriages for same-gender loving individuals. And Affinity, along with a number of other organizations uh, that work with the black LGBT community, are getting together to have an event this coming Monday. Uh, that's Monday the 25th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Shrine at 2109 South Wabash. And it's going to be at Illinois Marriage Equality, uh, the Black LGBTQ and Ally Celebration. And that's an opportunity for us to have um, a celebration in, about this historic piece of legislation on the south side of Chicago and um, with other black LGBT people, black legislators, and our friends, friends to the community, and those who have been working hard with us on this issue. But tonight, um, we are going to talk uh, to my buddy here, Miles Brady. And Miles is the lead for one of our um, monthly groups that meets at Affinity. And this group is called the Trans Focus Group. And Miles has been running the group since June, I think? Yep, since June. June. So just uh, quickly, the Trans Focus Group meets on the third Thursday of the month from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Affinity's offices. And if you want to learn more about the, uh, this group or any others, but uh, especially this group, you can contact Miles at Affinity Trans Focus Group at Affinity95.org. So, Miles, first of all, thank you for uh, running this group since since June. Um, thank you for allowing me to have <laughs> space to run my group. Oh, I was thrilled. <laughs> um, so, you know, I just talked about marriage equality and um, just wanted to get your take on what, what that piece of legislation <laughs> means for the trans community. Well, um, the trans community is a very large community has heterosexual people in there has homosexual people in there so for me I'm a heterosexual trans man mm -hmm. uh, it really didn't affect me too much but for my brothers and sisters who are homosexual you know mm -hmm. now you know they get the same privileges and rights that we have so I'm all for it mm-hmm so um tell us a little bit about the the group and the outreach that you've been doing to get the group going well the outreach I've been doing I've been going to the west side and the south side because I I was born and raised on South Side of Chicago on Hyde Park, Southside. South Side all day, <laughs> and I want to create a safe place in a neighborhood where I'm always at and where mm -hmm. I live. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do outreach in those areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always think it's interesting that a lot of times when people think of the trans community, they think of it as a community that's on the north side. I even right. had a politician ask me once if there were any trans people on the south side. Right. But before we jump into that, we got a call already, so let's take the call. I just had to mention this fact. Uh, when you look across the board, where you talk about in terms of race, religion, uh, economics, it is down across the board. And the only group that's really interested in these days in terms of getting married is having to be gay. And when you look at certain other things, when you look at even even in royalty, you look at Prince William and uh, uh, Kate, I think Kate Middleton, they uh -huh. lived together a long time before they got married. And when you look across the board, like I said, it is down. And some people are saying that may have led to uh, some of the factors that where gays and states are allowed to get married. When you say it's down, you're talking about marriage is down? Yeah, the rate it of marriage? is down. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
that's a, that's an interesting point. I'm going to uh, comment on that while you're off the air, okay? Okay. So um, that's a good point. That's one of the, and we're going to get back to the trans issue in a minute. But um, there was, during this whole uh, marriage battle, there was a lot of um, comments about um, gay people um, somehow uh, diluting the importance of marriage or ruining marriage or whatever. And as the caller just mentioned, um, marriage has kind of been on the ropes for a long time before LGBT people uh, even saw that as an option. But, you know, people are still um, believe in marriage. I mean, even when you look at the statistics that say 50% of marriages or nearly 50% uh, are unsuccessful, um, and you look at uh, the fact that people get married over and over again because they're still trying to get it right. So uh, uh, for us as an organization, um, Affinity Community Services, it wasn't just about kind of the sanctity of marriage to be involved in this battle. It was really more about a vehicle for economic security for vulnerable families because right now marriage is still the most resilient vehicle we have for recognizing families and for making sure that there are benefits and um, rights that come to um, surviving partners, for example, um, children in um, uh, homes where the the couples married married in that kind of thing. So that was more what it was about for for this organization. But to segue back to um, the transgender community, and I think an important thing for folks to realize is that the LGBT community is broad and diverse. And um, a lot of times when you see an issue like marriage, is not necessarily an issue that impacts all of the LGBT community, um, as we just talked about. And sometimes uh, there are pockets of the community that gets missed when we talk about public policy issues. Well, one thing that Miles and I have been talking about is just looking at the geographic diversity of the LGBT community. And um, just, um, I think people's perceptions when it comes to um, different parts of the city and whether or not they would be welcome there are any individual, uh, let alone someone who's within the LGBT community. Right, yeah, I know um, a lot of issues that I've faced with my group is a lot of trans people of color are afraid to come to the South Side, mm -hmm. even though my group is in Hyde Park, which I feel is a fairly safe neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They're terrified. They That's only feel safe north. That's really interesting, and, and these are black trans people. And these, are, these are black <laughs> trans people. These are black trans people, and they're just afraid. But on the other end of it, when I've gone on the north side to go to some of their events, yes, I feel comfortable within the space, but when I'm outside on the streets on the north side, uh, I get harassed by the police. Mm -hmm. I get, if I'm talking to a trans sister, I, people think that, you know, you're I'm soliciting right, her. Right, mm -hmm. I'm trying to solicit her. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, it's a trade-off. That's, that's trade interesting. Um, it's interesting that, well, I, you know, we and we've talked about this, right? So there's a perception and there's the reality. And I've had these conversations particularly with youth who... Um, go to the north side um, center on halstead and other places because they feel like they can be themselves in terms of their uh, sexual orientation and gender identity right. but then they are harassed because of their their race right. or perceptions about uh, wealth and other privilege right right i get asked um what's the biggest issue I face as a trans man? Uh -huh. And I always tell everybody, it's not that I'm trans, it's that I'm black. Black. <laughs> trans man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah. So you just looked at as another brother on yeah, the street. Another brother on the street. <laughs> yeah. You know, another brother on the street. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can feel that, and I, um, I hear that a lot. Um, race is something that isn't discussed too much in the LGBT community. I mean, it comes up in different ways. Um, a lot of times with some negativity, uh, some there's some blow up or, or something like that. And um, I think a lot of times when people think about the LGBT community and, and particularly the T, they think of a white person. Right. And um, so I'm just curious how you've been able to even 
find, if you will, the, the trans people of color as you do your outreach for this group? Well, um, I go to other people's groups. I go to events, LGBT groups, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, I go to a group that has 100 people. It might be two trans people of color. I go straight to those two right trans to people of color, <laughs> do what I need to do, and move on to another group and get another two or three. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're throwing out this term trans, transgender. Can you go over, um, you know, just some definitions yeah. between, like, transsexual and okay. transgender? Well, transgender is the umbrella term that kind of links together everybody that's on the trans spectrum, like intersex, two spirits, uh, female to male, male to female. We're all transgender. Mm -hmm. But a transsexual is somebody like myself. I, will, I was born one thing, but it didn't reflect what I was emotionally or psychologically. Mm -hmm. So I changed it. <laughs> and I think that's the uh, piece that a lot of people have a harder time understanding that um, um, for folks who don't fit, identify with the body that they were born mm -hmm. in and, and what that may be like. I see we have another call, caller, popular night. Good Hi. evening. Uh, my question is this. I hope you're following what's going on in California where Governor Jerry Brown has signed certain things in the law where, whatever you want to call it, transgender, transsexual person, children, where they can use the same restrooms, and also, uh, especially on the high school level, where they can play on the same sports team. We need to have a, a, a dialogue. What are we going to do when there's going to be an issue between women's sports and men's sports when you're going to have a transgender person be playing on a, a, a girls' team that have to be six nine and weighing three hundred pounds, and people are gonna say, you know, someone's we're gonna have to have a discussion. You know, they're gonna say that they they have an advantage over somebody else. We're gonna need to have that discussion when they're gonna wind up maybe being on a, a volleyball team, track and field. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need to have that discussion while other people may say it's not a problem, but it's gonna be a problem with some other people. And then uh, Playboy. They dealt with the problem head on. They, they say they're not going to allow any women that uh, with breast enhancement or whatever. So they deal with the other type of problem, you know, so they don't have to worry about a transsexual uh, person want to be in Playboy. Okay, you put a lot out there, um, so we'll try to I can address, address the uh, first that, part of yeah. it about the sports. Uh, mm -hmm. It's already an issue. When I was a youth, you know, I was a trans youth, and I was a... Uh, female playing on a female team but people thought that's before I even started taking hormones or anything that I had an advantage I mean mm -hmm. I peaked I started growing when I was in high school I'm 6'1 I'm 180 pounds you are the taller yeah, of the I'm a taller trans of man so <laughs> when I would come out with my sport with my team I had referees saying oh you guys have a co-ed team so it actually would have been a lot better for me to be on the men's team. I, mm, I practiced with them. I did my strength training with them. So you're always going to have an issue no matter what's going on. We just, mm -hmm. you know, it's 2013. It's time for us to start building bridges. Mm -hmm. We have to be a community of builders instead of destroyers. So mm -hmm. no, matter, no matter what we do, we're always going to have an issue. We just need to work together. And I think what the caller brought up about having the conversation is important because these are things that we don't, talk about and I know that you know as I've been on panels um, and, um, and had discussions just with broader communities there's you know always the issue of bathrooms and um, um, you know other accommodations that people feel should be made or think go too far and it reminds me of when I first started working in public transportation and the um, Americans with Disabilities Act was being enacted uh, prior to that time the federal law did not require any accommodations for people with disabilities whether they were in wheelchairs or blind or, or um, had cognitive disabilities or whatever they may be and it closed out jobs it closed out other opportunities for a whole group of people uh, until that law was passed and there was a lot of resistance uh, to passing the or a lot of resistance to enacting the law for some of the same arguments um, that we're making too many accommodations for a particular group uh, of people and it required having some dialogue 
as the caller was uh, pointing out, right. and and to to find ways to to work that out, and you know, some give and take on all all sides. All sides right. Yeah. Just like the Little Rock Nine, they have to make accommodations for them. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that caller, you know, would agree that we have to do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now it's another group's turn, and you know what? We need to do what we need to do. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and like you said, this this question has come up many times. There was a case of the um, so runner, a track uh, person in the, um, South Africa, who um, I think she was intersex. Yeah. And um, uh, they felt like she had an unfair advantage, right. and um, they had to they had to work through that. And you know, some things are hard, and we have to work through them. <laughs> I think we have another caller. My goodness, <laughs> hello, you, you there? Yes. What's your question or comment? I, w I was just wondering, uh, with the new laws uh, regarding gay marriage, how does that affect the? Uh, the transgender population. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great question. Thank you. Well, it affects the transgender population that uh, classify themselves as homosexual. Okay. So now they get, you know. Now they can marry their, uh, marry um, their, their partners. partners. That's right. Yeah, if, I guess if you identify as um, heterosexual, then it's not, a, not an issue. Right, it's not but, an issue. Um, still, if you identify as, as, as homosexual, then, you know, this gives those couples the opportunity to to marry right. another call <laughs> wow <laughs> we picked the right topic right. today hi you're well, on the air thank you for taking my call mm -hmm. um congratulations with the new uh, law that's going into effect as a gay man that's in my late 50s uh -huh. uh, i never thought i would see this day mm -hmm. but you all have been talking th this evening and you threw a term out that I'm not familiar with. Did you all say something like intersex? Ah, yeah. And if you did, can you explain to me, a gay man, uh -huh. what is intersex? Okay. Great question. Thank you. Mm hmm You want to do <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, intersex person is a person that is born with uh, both genitalia. Mm-hmm. So both male yeah. and female. You know, uh, in old school term. Mm. Oh, it's her Murphy diaper. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. but we don't use that term anymore. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, yeah, I just never had hurt. And, I've, you know, I try to watch you all every Friday and whatnot, and that oh. was a new one that you all threw out at me. And being a gay man, I thought I was up on most of this thing. So I said, okay, something <laughs> new and came out. Last time you ever and I appreciate you enlightening me. Thank and again, you like I said, congratulations on the new law being passed. And congratulations to you, too. Who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had another caller. Am I so <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so we were briefly off the air. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, mixed questions between the marriage issue and the... Um, and uh, transgender issues. Right. So um, I know that you have done some some travel and gone to some conferences. So you see what's happening around the country right. uh, in terms of uh, transgender issues and, and um, what folks are working on around right. the country. And Could I you... just want to say this too. Um, November twentieth was Transgender oh, yes, Day of Remembrance, thank you. and um, a lot of what we've been doing is like I mentioned earlier. We're trying to build bridges and include mm -hmm. everybody in the struggle. Because so far this year, there's been an estimate number of 238 trans people that have been murdered. Wow. And I said estimate because mm -hmm. some people, you know, aren't out or when they were killed, the way it was wrote up, you know, yeah. they didn't put the right information. So, and mostly trans women, right? Majority of trans women of color. Of color. Mm -hmm. Trans women of color. It's mm -hmm. the population that we really need to protect right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you for putting that out there because yeah. there were, and there have been murders here in Chicago. And I remember last year, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to remember the name. A um, uh, woman was murdered, and the way the story was written, um, used the birth name, used male pronouns, and, and all of that, and affinity wrote uh, a letter to the editor to really just blast them about that. Oh, another caller. Hi, what's your question? Hello? Hello. Uh, how would someone 
be able to come out to their family when their family is so strict mm. toward that, uh, you know, being gay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always a tough one. And um, if you don't mind, we'll answer it off the air, okay? Because um, I know a lot of people have this question, and and you know we encounter it a lot as an organization. I know, you know, I know you've had conversations right. with people. I've had conversations. So everyone's case is different, and you really have to think about what's safe for you. Yeah, that's that and uh, what a lot of people do is they build a community of choice first so that they have the emotional support that they're going to need and by a community of choice i mean you know friends maybe other family members who may um who are supportive of you so that when you do have that conversation if it does not go well have that network you have that section. network exactly right. and um and and i will say too that coming out is a process that happens over and mm -hmm. over and over again so there's no one coming out but these conversations are hard and I'll say for me I was in my 30s so I already you know I was financially independent and um, didn't have to be afraid of being kicked out of my parents home or anything like that it's uh, every situation is, is different but I still had you know that that nervousness and intrepidation about even starting that conversation and fortunately for me it went well but it, it sounds like you might be in a um, household that or family that may not be um, is open but um, you know when you're ready just do it but I would highly advise just having a network of friends already yeah you definitely mm -hmm. have to have that extra support yeah is that helpful yes that's helpful oh good and um, you can always, too, um, check out Affinity's website. We have different groups that meet uh, throughout the month, and there are other organizations, too, that have uh, monthly peer-led groups that where you can at least talk to other people who are in similar circumstances. Okay, thank you. All right. Wow, what a popular night. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were just getting, you were just getting ready to tell me about... Um, some of the conferences that you've been to. All right. I went to uh, Southern Comfort Conference, which is the largest and the longest running uh, transgender conference in America. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. I, yeah. I just, I, I came out of the trans closet in April. So it was the first time. April. Yeah, of this <laughs> one. And it was the first time I've ever been around so many people that identify like I did. It, it was life changing and empowering. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's good to see people that look like you. Mm-hmm. And relate to you. you know. Was this specifically trans people of color? No, no, this was just trans people. Just trans people. Yeah. Okay. I made friends with an um, eighty-year-old trans woman that happened to live in Evanston, and Evanston. We, we, right. <laughs> and we connected there. The conference was in Atlanta, and we connected. Oh, you know, that's it was great. Beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Did we have another caller? <laughs> okay. Um, so what what kind of sessions do you find at a trans conference? Well. Um, all the surgeons go there. All the surgeons? All the, yeah, ah. all the surgeons go there. So you're able to see all of them in mm -hmm. one spot, and they give you free referrals. Okay. You know, and uh, different products that uh, trans that people are use. That are needed. That are needed. <laughs> <laughs> Some that are really needed. And uh, just, just a spot for us all to get together and network and mm -hmm. support each other once a year, you know, in a large group like that. I think it should be mentioned, though, that even though um, folks may identify as trans, mm -hmm. they may not have surgery. Right. May not ever have right. surgery. Right, may not ever have surgery. Right. To be trans doesn't mean that you have to change your, you know, go from one gender to another. You could be comfortable in your own skin. So we just got a question from a 13-year-old girl who thinks she's gay, and she's wondering if she should tell her parents. And... Um, I would say to you, um, hmm, I would like to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would like to do. So I want you to do this. Um, I want you to call me at the office at 773-324-0377. And um, I, I really want to have the conversation with you to see what your circumstances are. Because as I was telling 
the other caller and and if you call back I'll also talk to you um, um, after the show um, I was as I was telling the other caller every situation is different so I don't want to give general advice especially for someone who's so young and so dependent on you know the family that right. you're in so I just want to know more about your situation before um, I give you specific advice on that so I'm just not, I'm not trying to avoid the question at all it's just that's um, every situation is different right. so I really want to talk to you so please 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 um, either call me at the office or call back after the show um, so so you've been working on this group for since June yes and um, just wanted to get a sense of what your plans are going into 2014. Well, my plans are going into 2013 is to get more people, you know, to, to not venture be of the out. South right, side. To not be afraid <laughs> of the South Side, and just you know, we we could create spaces everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere. We shouldn't be just trapped in one neighborhood. You know, just venture out, and I also want to get the parents involved. Like uh -huh. I know my parents and my siblings have said that you know they would kind of like a support group for them on the south side too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. to talk to other people that are going through some of the same things they're going through. And Affinity has been trying to get a group together for for parents of um, LGBT folks and LGBT parents. Um, so we're going to continue to work on that. And I just want to remind people of the event on Monday, the 25th, um, 6 to 10 at the Shrine. It's the Illinois Marriage Equality the Black LGBTQ and Ally celebration. And uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in today. And we hope everybody has a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. And let's be mindful of the Native Americans who were here before the pilgrims. Thank you and, and have a great holiday.